Um, so, uh, the session of today is called Thousand Ways to Use Packet Tracer. Um, the reason why we have um, created this session, why we uh, came to this idea, because we realized that we have in the program a lot of instructors worldwide. Uh, I think we have uh, nearly uh, 20,000 instructors active every year, and uh, we have many thousands of new instructors joining the program every year. So we have uh, quite a lot of people um, rotating uh, every year with the role of instructor. And uh, many new people, many new instructors are joining the program. For those of you who are with us for many years, probably, probably you will not learn uh, very many things uh, new for you today. However, I believe you should be learning something new at least because we will have uh, several showcases today. But especially this session should be useful for uh, for our educators who are joining uh, this Working Academy uh, and or Skills for All um, as newcomers, as newcomers, educators, as newcomers, uh, as instructors who, um, who are uh, willing to start teaching your students and who are willing to learn the best and apply uh, the best possible way um, the skills on packet tracer usage. So because of that, uh, we have created this session mostly thinking about uh, those of you who are not so uh, many years with us uh, and who are wondering, oh, I heard many things about packet tracer, but this application is very difficult. Uh, this application is huge. It has, uh, I don't know, million of ways to use it, million different um, menus, forms, layers, um, workspaces. So it's very easy to get uh, lost in, in it. So that's why today we, um, we just put together several, as you can see, seven, um, seven use cases. And our goal today was to make some kind of a cocktail session to show you different use cases very quickly. Uh, just for you to have um, a quick idea, uh, and also we will try to visualize it for you with the series of demos that we will be running uh, today for you, so you can understand more or less uh, in which way you can use Packet Tracer, considering uh, your own expectation of uh, well of the program of the software and of course your own plans on. Um, how exactly you are willing to teach your students and what is your academic goal. So I will uh, start up with a quick uh, warm up, um, just generally about the packet tracer. And the first thing what I want to do, I want you guys to take the annotation tool again and put on this uh, slide in one of these quarters your experience with packet tracer so far. So let us know. So we just understand we have nearly 100 people online with us now. So those of you who are joining from uh, from the PC, could you please take the annotating tool and put yourself uh, uh, put yourself well put your arrow uh, annotation tool on one of these quarters? Like, are you already using it? Maybe? Oh, well, we see a lot of people are using it. <laughs> so Mm, wow, Raquel, we 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 might have um, we might have missed our target audience today. So <laughs> this okay, 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 guys. Okay, I see that many of you are very experienced users users of Packet Tracer. I we don't have a single arrow like here. <laughs> That's what I was expecting. That some uh, some people. So anyway, um, I understand that mostly guys, you are joining APD Week because you are joining it every time, uh, and. Uh, Still, I think it's, uh, you will learn something uh, something cool today. Uh, yeah, we have at least at least one um, newcomer. So uh, anyway, thank you very much, uh, dear dear participants, dear instructors. Thank you very much for your uh, feedback. Let me kick it off. So first of all, we strongly believe that Cisco Working Academy is the education program historically based uh, on the understanding and having in mind that the key important thing number one that you can really do with your students is hands-on when you are uh, just reading the book is one experience but when you are doing something with your hands when you're connecting cables when you observe how the protocol uh, turns up green and running uh, when you see the link showing up on the switch and when you do the uh, 
no shutdown command and click enter and you do it the student do it uh, with their hand that really that hands-on experience is a great motivator um unfortunately that's not always possible that a student is in the real classroom and has access to the real equipment that's where packet tracer is for and this is built um uh, to allow students to still uh, get a lot of practice, to build students' confidence, and also to help you to teach a lot of stuff. This is why this is why we have Packet Tracer. Uh, Packet Tracer is not the only tool that we have; uh, is one of many different tools that we have in the program for many different courses that you can use. Uh, currently, I think the most used one are the Packet Tracer is number one, almost always. Uh, we have now uh, a lot of courses that are using virtual uh, machines uh, and uh, we also have some courses uh, related to IoT that uses some special software which we call Prototyping Lab and also some other options are available. So Packet Tracer is not the only um, possible tool that would help you to deal uh, with, um, well, lack of physical equipment or maybe studying from home if student uh, needs and of course we provide the opportunity for academies to purchase physical equipment for your labs with a very reduced uh, price. So a uh, quick uh, overview slide for Packet Tracer. This software is quite uh, well, quite old already. Um, by old, I mean I mean it is very developed um, program. Um, I think the first version of Packet Tracer arrived more than 10 years ago, and currently we are already at the version 8 with many things embedded into it. And pretty much every course that we have in the program is currently uh, used uh, with Packet Tracer, and the labs are designed uh, with Packet Tracer, regardless if you teach uh, IT essentials, PC hardware and software, maybe, or you teach CCNP, or you teach cybersecurity. Uh, or maybe uh, DevNet. There are ways, very good ways to use Packet Tracer. So it really, it really supports a lot of goals. For those who are new um, to NetAcad, or and also that uh, that is for students, if you don't have Packet Tracer so far and if you don't have good experience uh, and you want to learn how to use it, you can go to skillsforall.com and enroll yourself into one of the available Packet Tracer courses. Uh, the general one, the one focused on networking or the one focused on the IoT, the Internet of Things. Uh, you may also complete the exam and get the digital badge in the end. And of course, uh, while you are undertaking taking one of those courses, you will be able also to download uh, the packet tracer. Uh, we also wanted to mention, we will not be doing a demo on Packet Tracer accessibility, but we just wanted to mention that uh, Packet Tracer support a number of accessibility features, uh, such as a screen reader or navigation uh, support with keyboard shortcuts or using uh, tab. So um, it, is, uh, it is supported. Uh, finally, just uh, this slide has three key facts that I wanted to make very clear uh, that Packet Tracer, first of all, is not a replacement of real equipment. So it uh, it is a simulator. It's not the emulator even. So it's not a virtualized environment where you are running the real operating system of uh, Cisco Gear. Uh, that's a simulation tool. It pretends that it's doing a thing. It, it shows you uh, what you want to see, but it's not really operates on the... Uh, on the back engine, how uh, the real equipment does. So um, bear, it, bear this, this in mind when you are doing some experiments or maybe you are observing some uh, strange behavior or error, or maybe uh, you are observing something that is a little bit different from the real equipment. That's why uh, we recommend you also to have real physical equipment and practice not only on packet tracer because uh, that's, that's not really uh, a direct replacement. Still, it's a very powerful tool uh, to support your um, academic um, goals uh, in the classroom and also outside the classroom, as you will see further uh, today. It supports not just uh, helping you to learn if you're a student, but also it supports a lot uh, helping you to be a better instructor and helps you to teach uh, a lot of things in the better way. So let me start with the case number one with that. Uh, and case number one is very simple, is what Packet Tracer was built for uh, maybe more than 10 years ago. That's simulation of network 
uh, technologies. So you can build in Packet Tracer very simple scenarios and very uh, and very advanced scenarios. You see here on some screenshots that we made from different uh, labs from the courses and also from uh, uh, custom custom created labs, also from the labs created by our instructors for many, many years. You can see here quite uh, uh, advanced scenarios, quite sophisticated topologies. Uh, what's important here is that uh, in virtual environment of Packet Tracer, you can use very many devices. If in the physical classroom, maybe you have three routers, maybe you have six or maybe nine routers, well, maybe 20 in the best case. In Packet Tracer, you can create a topology with uh, more. Um, I'm not sure about thousands, but I have seen cases where uh, people created like 100 plus devices in the topology, and that topology was pretty much uh functional so you can build whatever you want you can play and construct whatever you want you can configure devices with a quite sophisticated configuration it's not just by just default ip addressing and like dhcp is supported many things are supported including uh network services like iptv like telephony you can uh, put re, uh, simulated uh, cisco ip phones in packet tracer and you can configure those technologies you can play with whatever kind of uh, wireless technologies including 3 4g including cell towers well a lot of stuff uh, we don't have time really now to uh, to um, the general overview of everything that is there because uh, maybe it will be uh, a boot camp for a couple of weeks <laughs> However, what uh, I wanted to do today is to do a simple and quick demo of creating a very basic, uh, very simple topology in Packet Tracer. Uh, to do that, I will pretend that we have a student who has a laptop uh, at home. This laptop is currently equipped with the uh, network interface card for Ethernet, but I want to change it for wireless. So let me remove this one and let me plug in uh the wireless card with antenna and then i will power the pc on again so currently the pc on it is powered and is ready to be connected to um to the network let's imagine that you have um that you have a home router that is just uh, a very regular home router that has uh that's by the way how it may look like. It has one internet port that connects to internet service provider or to the internet that has four uh, ports for local uh, network and it has antennas for wireless connectivity. Um, this is a kind of a typical uh, GUI interface to configure this router. So uh, it will be default uh, set to DHCP. So it will uh, issue you IP addresses from, from this range, 192.168.0.1. And I want, to set up, uh, I want to set up the internet port of this router to be static IP, uh, let's say 5556, uh, because I will uh, soon place a server in the network that would be, uh, let me put it, well, we don't really, I think we don't really need the default gateway in this scenario. So, um, okay, it doesn't allow me to continue without the gateway. So let me put it like five, uh, five, five, five. I think now it can be accepted yeah, because the normal situation that the internet should have, uh, should have some gateway. So wireless connectivity is already on because the SSID and the password is default. And now my PC is already configured and uh, I can, I theoretically, I can reach the router. To make life a uh, little bit more interesting, I will put the server here. Uh, let the server be uh, connected by cable from the fast Ethernet port of the server to Internet port of the router. So the server pretends to be the Internet. Let me configure the server's IP address uh, on the fast Ethernet uh, interface and let it be 5555 with, the, okay, let it be the default mask that uh, suits me well in this case. And I wanted to make sure that uh, HTTP server is enabled. So uh, theoretically, I should have now connectivity from my PC. Uh, let me try to ping first. Uh, let me try to launch command prompt. And first to check connectivity, I want to ping 192.168.0.1. That's my uh, router. So I can ping it. Um, that's working good. 
Secondly, let me try to ping 5555. That's, that would be my uh, internet server. And I think I also have ping running. And let me just try to go to the desktop again, <clears throat> close my common prompt, open the web browser, and try to open this web page. Web page that is located on the server. As you can see, I have some content here loaded. This is the default web page of Packet Tracer uh, generic server. I can open also the image here. Uh, so the connectivity works, the packets are flying, the pings are working, and the configuration is really, really simple with the computer and uh, this router located at, uh, at user's home and the imaginable internet server that uh, serves the, the uh, HTTP web page to this client located behind the router. So you actually have not enabled on it and you also can uh, speak with your students about this, this technology. So uh, this is a very simple case. Uh, let me just now uh, close Packet Tracer and I will continue uh, our story shifting to case number two, physical layer experience. Uh, I think I will pass it over to Raquel at this point so she guides you through that uh, case with layer one. Thank you, Semyon. So yes, um, as you can, you know, as you know that basically we have improved a lot the physical layer experience into Packet Tracer, obviously because with you know we experience uh, all of us, you know, sometimes that we were teaching from home and obviously we didn't have access to equipment, and even though Packet Tracer is not going to be, uh, you know, uh, is going to uh let's say substitute the the physical equipment the physical layer has improved a lot just to allow you know to play a little bit with that part and give a bit uh you know a better view of how the physical layer works for the student for the students so we this we already had uh, obviously our racks but things that have been included things like for example the self uh the pegboard for the storage, so now we have all the cables here uh, hanging on the pegboard. Uh, we can have this setup, and we will see in a demo as well, where we can have our rack, so where we store our our devices and we are not using them. Then we can bring them into the rack. Uh, how we can also bring some end devices into the table, and it's very easy just to play with them. It's drag and drop. Uh, also, the way we connect the cables has changed. Before you you will click on it, and similar as the logical um, uh, logical uh, layer, you will just select which port. But here now you need to go and you know plug it in in the exact uh, port. And this is how we will see it. For example, we need to go with the cable and just find the right port to connect it in there. Um, also, we'll see, you know, how the cables are moving from, you know, one device to the other. We can also make a zoom to the devices uh, to see it closer. We can also, you know, see the front and back, so we can switch and see both sides of the devices. So, you see, it's enabling as well the students to see, uh, okay, it's not like touching a device, but at least they can, you know, see the back and front because before you could just see one side and you don't know what is on the other side, but now you can see a little bit more of these devices. Then also we are able to manage the cables. So we see here how this, for example, uh, rack is not looking pretty nice and probably if something goes wrong and you need to find the right cable is going to be a nightmare. Um, you know, and this is also how it was before in Packet Tracer because you couldn't manage the cables, so you will see, you know, everything made a mess. Now we can manage the cables. This is starting to look much better. Um, and that's how you also see it here in Packet Tracer where we see all the cables hanging. Okay, here there is only like three, okay, so it's not a big deal. But if we manage them, they will see, you see how this cable, I don't know if you are able to see it, and this one, they actually come then together uh, into here. So when you have three cables, that's you know not a big deal. But if you have a big topology and you have many many cables, then this can be a mess. And if you want to you know uh, manage them, it's going to look more organized. And maybe this is a way just to show the students you know like in real life you just don't go and just put the cables where you want. You know it will be better to keep things organized. This is for example. <clears throat> this is an example, basically. This is from uh, one of the exercises in Packet Tracer for uh, like data centers. 
So, for example, you have here three racks and a lot of cables. Still, is you know, you see many cables in here. So, when everything is managed, you know, everything is looking much organized. And you can see that all the cables are not there, just hanging around, which, you know, from here to there, making a bit of a mess. So, this is just maybe something to teach them about best practices when working with equipment. Also, trying to, you know, bring things uh, from the real life, just cable conduits. So, you know, moving cables from one place to the other, they may be going through our roof, and this is the way to represent them. So, when we see the cables, and this device, for example, is going up here, and we don't know where that is going, and actually it's mentioning here, cable conduit to Warrington Data Center. Oh, so, okay, we have this thing, but on this virtual world, and these cables that are going up there, and it seems that they are going somewhere we don't know, they are actually going to this cable conduit till the other place where they are connected. So, in this case, this is a data center uh, impact tracer where they are going. Uh, so, you know, it's a way to represent this into the virtual world. And it also works with patch panels. We are going to see also how this is with patch panels. So, uh, how we can also manage all of these cables uh, and having connected to the patch panels. So, you know, the typical, for example, uh, you know, you don't usually connect, uh, for example, your laptop straight away into the, into the switch, right? When you go to your office, obviously you connect it to the uh, Ethernet port, maybe you have on your, on your desk and where is that going, right? So that's uh, probably like the patch panels. So, this is how we can also play uh, and simulate uh, how this works. And I really like, you know, this example here. So, imagine that we have this office. We have here our rack. This is where we have all our devices. But then in each, uh, each room, let's say, we have this patch panel. So, this is where, for example, people can come and plug in their computers, maybe even a webcam. Uh, we have other devices here now it's too small I don't remember which one is this or you can bring your own laptop and just connect it and it will work because you are connecting it to the jack and this comes still here to the patch panel okay and connected then to the to the switch so it's a better way to manage these devices and also maybe uh, something to simulate the, the how it works in real life and something very cool uh, that is support for bad practices what it means is like now P uh, packet tracer supports making mistakes, especially with the with the cabling or even devices. So look, for example, at this table, and we have one PC on top another, of another one. Here we have a laptop on top of uh, some switches, and looks like a, maybe a printer. So uh, you know support for bad practices. Obviously, you know in a real life, no one should do this. You know this is not how things should work, but you are allowed to do it, and you know or maybe putting all of these devices into the table when they should be mounted into the rack. So, you know, we can also start to teach a bit how it should work, you know, okay, no, you cannot put your devices on the table, you know, put them on the rack and this is how it works. Also the cables, if obviously is possible because it will be possible in real life, can be connected to ROM ports. Like for example, the console cable could be connected to an ethernet port. So this could happen as well in real life. Maybe the student makes a mistake and connect the console to the Ethernet. And then it's like, ah, I cannot manage this uh, device. What is happening is, yes, you would, you didn't connect it to the right port. And so this is also allowed in packet tracer. <clears throat> also the structure cables can be connected to patch ports. And, you know, any ideas that you can try uh, are also supported that, you know, we can, we can see how things are not done and then show the students how they should be done. So, with this, uh, I want to show you a demo of uh, how this works in the physical mode. But also, uh, we have uh, already a session that it was called Packet Tracer 8 in physical mode in, uh, in CCNA 702. Uh, here, when we pass you the slides, you have the recording and also the files used. So, we have a whole session about this. So, if you want to know more about physical mode, you can watch this session that we this, did in the past. And with that, let me move into the demo. So let me load my packet tracer. And now I hope that you can see my screen. 
uh, this is uh, this is an example of one activity on the physical and the physical mode. One important thing is these activities usually, as you can see, the logical is uh, the logical workspace is locked. Okay, meaning we cannot work in there, and it is just made so they can work with the physical workspace. Um, for example, this activity we have here the scenario. Okay, this is how you know it should look like on the logical. This is our topology. Uh, we have here the dressing table and the instructions on what we should do. I will just show you a bit, you know, how you can bring, for example, the devices. So we have two switches here that I'm going to bring into the rack, not to the table. Uh, so I'll bring here my switch and here the other one. By the way, you can zoom in, okay? So you can see the devices, okay, and everything that we have there. We also have here some PCs. Okay, and I can zoom out just for convenience and then we can also bring here. We have put two switches. Now they are connected to the power distribution device. And now I'm going to bring PCA here and PCB here. Not here. I could do it, but no, let's do it right. Uh, and then here also we have the pegboard with, uh, sorry, with the cables. Uh, if you, you know, uh, just leave your mouse, uh, you hover over it, you will see which kind of type of cable is it. This is a console. This is a copper straight through, you know, this is a USB. So you will see which kind of cables we have. So now we are going to connect these two switches between them. And for that, I will just come here. And what I'm going to do is I do right click to inspect the front, and then I can even zoom in to see better all the ports of this uh, switch. And I'm going to connect it to the pass Ethernet 01. Okay. And now I'm going to go to my second switch, inspect front, and zero one. Perfect. One thing I want you to notice is how now the light is, uh, you know, in amber color. And if we wait like a minute or so, it will come green. So we can also see how the lights, uh, how the LED lights are working. And now we can then maybe uh, work on connecting our our PC also to the to the switch. Let me see, for example, show you how I was talking about uh, how you can, you know, make mistakes. Maybe I can take the console cable and connect it here. And yes, you know, it fits. So it's actually I'm able to connect it. And then obviously if I come to my switch and expect the back, okay, here's my console. I'm able to connect it, but obviously this is not right. So this won't work, but I was able to do this into the physical layer. So I can now just move here, maybe take this one and say, okay, no, this is the right one. Now it should work. Okay. So obviously with this, uh, you know, there are a lot of possibilities, you know, I'm not going to spend a lot of time just connecting and doing the activity. Just wanted to show you a little bit the things you can do, how you can, you know, go come here, you know, see the ports up close, see the other side of the device. Same with the PC. You can also, you know, inspect it. Ah, when it's something very important, we can switch it on. If it's not on, it's not going to work, right? So we can switch on our PCs. Perfect. And also let's see if now this became green. Yes, now we can see the uh, LED lights are on in green. So meaning this is working well. So yeah, uh, you can explore a lot more. And as I mentioned, we have this session in the past about uh, the physical mode, so you can see more in there. With that, I want to move into case three. So create your own lab with Activity Wizard. And this is something that a lot of you always ask us about, you know, uh, Activity Wizard is, you know, it, it can be actually, uh, it has so many things to talk about it that we could build, I don't know, three sessions around Activity Wizard, but today we just want to show you the basics, or you know, just so everyone knows what is Activity Wizard. So basically, basically, it's an assessment tool that allows you to create uh, detailed networking scenarios. And what is more important is that you can grade them. You know, you can create your own topology, your your own exercise, send it to your students, and make it uh, you know uh, self accessible. So uh, an assessment like they already get the points when they're doing the right things. And we are going to see how you can do that. Possible uses of this activity wizard. Well, first of all, 
there are already existing activities, right, uh, right in the portfolio. So you can edit an existing activity. Uh, many people ask us about, you know, where do I find the passwords for this? So you can find it on the uh, on the Cisco communities if you look for the packet tracer. Uh, there's a packet tracer, uh, like um, I just don't get the word right now. But yeah, there is like a discussion about packet tracer, and you can find all the passwords there. Uh, later on, maybe I'll, I'll I'll drop the 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 link on the chat. You can also create your own activities from zero, and we are going to see how you can start with that. Uh, and with that, you can maybe create a case study, you know, how something works in real life as well, you know, maybe bring some uh, scenarios and even have your students create their own activities, answer it in class. You know, maybe you can encourage them. Uh, one of the activities is why don't you think of, uh, you know, a, a real life scenario or, you know, why don't you create your own topology uh, and maybe set it with the rest of the class? That could be pretty interesting for them. And. This is an example of, of the things that you can, uh, of the items that can be a score. And, you know, there are thousands of ac uh, accessible items. So I think there was like, you know, some of the switches, they have more than thousand, you know, items that can be, uh, you know, can be a score. So it has a lot of customization. Just to give you some, you know, general idea, for example, things that here, like, uh, for example, the, the banner for the login and the message of the day, uh, you know, you can put it as, as okay, it's worth one point, maybe the clock time zone, uh, you know, I'm not going to go through all of them, but just some of them, for example, some typical ones, right? Like the enable password and secret, so one point each, or for example, to configure the FTP with password and username, uh, maybe also, for example, if a port has power, also the security, right? And well, in all of these examples, you see that the scoring is one point, but actually uh, you can change this number and, you know, make it any points that you want. So maybe you think that security is really important. You are teaching them uh, about security and you say, no, actually this is going to be three points each or, you know, obviously this is open to do it as you want. Uh, some, uh, let me move in. Uh, so what it will be the steps that you need to follow to create your own topology? or your own activity wizard uh, in Packet Tracer? Well, the first of all, the most important will be that you design your activity. So think about what do you want to create before you start doing it in Packet Tracer, uh, or maybe just play around in Packet Tracer. What do I want to do, right? Uh, and and think about it. Okay, you know, <clears throat> this, uh, this time I'm going to teach them about, you know, uh, for example, we're going to start with basic configuration and maybe a little bit of routing. I wanted to configure this, this and that. So just design it. And after that, create the topology, create actually what is going to be what they have to achieve. So what it will be the answer network. OK, so you are going to just create what they have to work to, you know, to get to that point. And after that, you will create the initial network. So it may be that they start empty or, you know, or maybe they stop already with some devices, but nothing is configured. So then you will start from that initial network to achieve the answer network. After you've done that, then you will select which items to score. So as we were seeing, so for example, I wanted to configure the, the message of the day. I wanted to configure the, the host name. I wanted to configure IP address uh, and all, all of these interfaces. And then you select which things you want them to, to score. Then you also have lock options. So with this, uh, you can decide which things to lock. For example, as we saw in the logical space, you can lock this and that. Create also instructions for the activity, very important, if you want them to follow and see what they have to do. Equally important or even more password protect the activity, because if you don't put a password on it, then they can go into the activities wizard and see everything. Uh, then save the, activ save the activity and test it, okay? Just to see everything is working as you expect. And then obviously then you can share it with your students and, and, you know, and make them do the activity. Here is a, an example of what you can see on the answer network, the assessment tree, and where you can select which things to um, that are going to be, you know, a score. And if you want to see everything that you have selected, you can come here and say, so check only. So this will show everything that you have selected so far for a scoring. The locking options that we were talking about, there are many things that you can lock. 
you know, from maybe switching to logical workspace to maybe uh, the delete tool, they cannot delete anything, or maybe they cannot add devices. So you can decide which things you want to lock. And the, uh, and this is the activity or let's say the session I was talking about. We already have in the past a session called Packet Tracer Activity Wizard, where we talk more in details about this. So you will have here the recording and the files, so you can explore more about this. With this, Semyon, back to you with case four. Thank you very much, Raquel. Uh, I'm here back again, guys, to continue this entertainment sessions uh, session of today. Uh, we are a little bit running uh, uh, late, but that was, uh, well, honestly expected because we have many cases today. So, uh, Raquel, can you please pass me the the, the role of presenter? and uh, Or can I grab it? I can grab it myself, don't worry. Um, we have a couple of questions in Q&A that I didn't have time to answer. Please take care of them. And I will continue taking you guys through the cases. So, let's talk about multi-user. Multi-user is the feature that is in, um, well, I think it exists for already at, at least five years, maybe more. So uh, that's one of the early development features that we have enabled in Packet Tracer that's called multi-user. Multi-user means that you can have two instances of Packet Tracer running in, in two different, if you want, windows or computers or classrooms, or maybe even different cities, uh, as long as one of those is directly connected to internet with a publicly uh, reachable IP. So you can have uh, one topology running on one side and another topology running on the other side. And these topologies could be connected with Packet Tracer multi-user cloud. Imagine the multi-user cloud as the VPN, as a service internal packet tracer VPN uh, communication cloud that is using uh, its own communication protocol that uh, we call packet tracer messaging protocol, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then you can uh, connect, uh, for example, a remote uh, user, will it be a remotely located student to your main topology that a student can uh, for example, observe or investigate or troubleshoot, right? Of course, you will have all the network connectivity, IP connectivity uh, running through the uh, packet tracer messaging protocol. So using this idea of multi-user cloud, um, early days, there was a game created uh, that was called King of the Hill game, where... Um, so the idea of this game was to connect 11 players, so 1, 2, 3, and till, uh, well, 12, till the number uh, player 11, starting from 0, so it's 12 in total. So imagine that 12 different students are connecting remotely to their multi-user cloud, and then they have to troubleshoot the internal network of this cloud. So each of those clouds, uh, they have quite sophisticated network consisting of many routers and switches, maybe many, uh, well, ideas like switching loops or maybe uh, route redundancies, many different routing protocols and issues embedded. So they have to investigate uh, while they don't see the picture. So you don't see that topology. You only can use show and debug commands to figure out what's going there, what is the next uh, default gateway for the next hop and so on and so on, and what's the issue. Then the student resolve the issue uh, and, and yes, for, for all students, of course, the issues are the same and the networks are the same inside of these clouds. So finally, in the end of the day, when student uh, gets through that, um, through that network inside of that cloud, resolved uh, all the conflicts and all the problems, the student is getting to a central switch. And the one who got to the central switch, uh, first of all, uh, uh, the, the student can be named as a king of the hill because this is the hill in the in the center of the topology, and secondly, uh, you have the full control of the uh, of the hill, and you can disable all other ports except of your port, disconnecting all other <laughs> all other game players, becoming a true uh, a true king of the hill. So that's the the idea of the multi-user game. You can play. Um, in class or uh, actually even uh, even remotely. And that's very, very, it's quite sophisticated game between CCNA and CCNP level of networking. And 
was developed many years ago. Another example uh, of a good game was developed uh, maybe three or four years back uh, uh, by Raquel and myself. And we just played the words and uh, named it Escape, uh, not the Escape Room, but Escape Root. <laughs> so that's what we called. Uh, that was also a game where, um, where, where people could connect remotely to investigate, troubleshoot the topology. Uh, the difference here was that we have included in this game um, fresh technologies that came, if I'm not mistaken, with Packet Tracer version 7, that was uh, many new stuff on security, IoT devices. Uh, we have included even some programming, so you have to resolve a little of the programming uh, issues. And of course, multi-user uh, connection is the key to, um, to play this game. Basically, the idea was uh, like similar to the escape room uh, quest scenario, like you are getting into the room, you have your smartphone, you don't know what to do, then you start investigating, you connect wirelessly to some servers, you are reading some instructions that are located on these servers, then you break into the uh, next network trying to open the door that uh, is um, uh, leading your path to, to uh, the, the next room. And finally, in the end of the game, uh, you have to resolve um, several other issues. And in the end of the game, you need to uh, to uh, uh, push the button uh, to finally uh, finally open the door and end this game. So more or less, the idea was uh, like that, and it was also a multi-user game activity where every participant was uh, was connected to their uh, door that they finally have to open. And uh, on the central screen, we demonstrated this kind of picture with, uh, well, many participants. Uh, how much? Well, maybe more than 20 participants, right? Uh, 30, up to 30 participants. And uh, on the central screen uh, in the room, when many people are playing, you actually can see real time when the doors are being opened, which means that the participants have, have completed uh, the game. And another scenario that uh, I'm just shortly will do a quick demo on that is uh, quite a fresh uh, stuff we have created with uh, upgrading uh, physical layer or layer one workshop or the lab. Raquel was just demonstrating previously. So the idea was uh, that you have, um, you have, so the task is to discover the physical topology, the real floor plan of the building with the real computers connected to socket walls, some port number of the socket wall, and then this cable is being uh, ran in, in, the, in the conduit to the central location to the, uh, to the main wiring closet where you have patch panels located and, and you have all the mess with port numbering and physical connections, and you you can make mistakes like uh, uh, d like mistakes in port numbering or connecting cables in the wrong way to the to the different port, like uh, losing connectivity. Uh, the thing is that in this lab we enabled students with just limited amount of cables. So you have you don't have unlimited cables; you only have limited number of cables. So you cannot really allow yourself to make a lot of mistakes. Um, and of course, you have to resolve that topology. You have to reach full end-to-end -end connectivity with uh, all the devices. But the uh, the trick here was that uh, this lab is actually enabled with a network controller. So it's a kind of DNA C that sits in the network and uh, discovers the network, observing how many active devices you have in the network. And then as far as you are playing the game and as far as the network controller discovers that more and more devices are appearing in the network, it actually communicates back uh, via the RESTful API uh, request. It communicates back uh, the, the messaging uh, to, the, to the WebEx uh, Teams um, client, um, posting messages like how many devices uh, one user or another users have already enabled. And once all devices are enabled, uh, the bot will generate a big message that you can also show on the main screen. Uh, congratulations, player one, or congratulations, Turbo, you, uh, you, win, you win this game. So uh, we do have an IPD session recorded and recording posted together with files in the, in the archive. You can check out or later you download these presentations and the link will be, um, uh, will be accessible. And let me quickly do a demo uh, of that activity just to, 
Oh, sorry. Uh, I will open that one. So just me, let me open that in packet tracer. So look, here I already have the web space, the, the, the chatbot created with, um, well, some messages I already received while I was playing and testing this activity. So the last was in the morning of today. Uh, now it's already 10.51 at, uh, at my at my site and uh, there are no new messages and the activity is now being loaded. So first of all, I need to enable the external network access to network controller. So I need to click yes. I also need to make sure that I go to uh, preferences of packet tracer and on the miscellaneous tab, um, it's best of all if I enable these two checkboxes that enables also the external network connectivity between uh, internal network devices and the external. Uh, that's basically for API requests that was designed for API requests. And um, and also I need to make sure that in my network controller, okay, uh, in my network controller, I have enabled this checkbox uh, that allows the controller to speak with, uh, with my local PC on the port HTTP uh, 58,000. So I also need to enable that. And uh, once it's done, and I already have a couple of PCs connected here, I have kind of connected it uh, uh, while I was pre preparing for that session. I already see that I received the message that player one is now uh, two devices connected. So these two devices, this PC A and PC B. Let me just, uh, to make it more interesting, to rename this device and, and call it uh, Semyon uh, IPD, for example. So we can see some different name when more devices are being um, are being connected. So uh, and the goal is actually to was the goal was and is is to explore this physical topology uh, where we have different uh, PCs. You see this one is down, is kind of connected physically, but the the link is down. Maybe on the other side, link is still not connected. And there are many other devices, many other PCs and sockets that, that you need to investigate where it is all connected to. Um, you need to investigate the addressing uh, documentation here. You need to investigate the cabling documentation here, like which um, patch panel ports are connected to which wall mount uh, sockets. And you need to uh, actually reconnect your network, making sure that uh, it would be connected properly and here you have limited amount of cables so actually you cannot take more cables so let me just take one and connect it uh, to well uh, let me zoom in a little bit and let me connect this one to for example port uh, 7 and I will connect it to this switch so uh, let me take another one and try to also connect uh, for example port 8 and also connect it to to the switch and maybe I will take another one and connect this port to this port. And while I'm doing that, let me just fast forward the time a little bit so the packet tracer uh, converge the network and that we skip the um, spanning tree uh, timers and delays. And see, the result is I have a new message. Samian IPD is now three devices. That's good start. So something I've got to connect, uh, I managed to connect in the right way, uh, but something maybe not. You see that some ports are green, some ports are uh, not on, which means uh, I didn't manage to properly connect all the cables. So originally the reason of this game is to properly connect everything. And once I connect all of the devices properly, uh, the, the WebEx bot will send me a message or they will sell the, the workshop organizers. Uh, the, the message will appear for each player who is actually, who is doing what, how, how many devices are connected. And finally, if you connect all 12 or how many there are, you will actually win the game. So um, just once again, the idea here is that we have uh, a network controller here that is controlling the network. And uh, we have a script which is running uh, on this PC actually. Um, I can even show you the script. If you go to programming and open this file, you will see that uh, there is some script enabled with connectivity to, to the bot, which is posting some messages. Uh, so in a programmable way, you can, uh, you can enable this kind of automation. So there are API is implemented uh, two times. First, uh, the network controller is gathering the, the information, uh, sending that to the, to the script. And secondly, script is sending that uh, information to the, uh, to the chat. Okay, uh, 
So um, hopefully we've done with this demo and you have a good idea how you potentially can create uh, uh, multi-user games or maybe API enabled games with Packet Tracer. Let me go to the next portion case, uh, use case number five, IoT world and smart things. So when version seven of Packet Tracer arrived, it was enabled with a lot of IoT related, um, let me just tell it stuff because it's uh, many different things. First of all, that uh, was new in Packet Tracer was physical environment. So now Packet Tracer has not only the network cables, port numbers and uh, IP packets running through the network, but it has weather, temperature, gravity, uh, you can create your own sun, your own weather, you can create whatever physical environment uh, parameters. You can you can make it snowing and raining in Packet Tracer. Uh, you can make it hot or cold and you can enable different IoT automation uh, to react on the uh, conditions of the environment that you also can uh, play with. That's a quick screenshot uh, just uh, to uh, to uh, to illustrate the idea of how many different devices you can find in Packet Tracer. So it's everything from smart lighting and uh, push buttons to coffee brewers and uh, solar panels. Even, even the RFID access cards and tags are here. So, and actually you can create much more because you have in Packet Tracer this thing that is called a thing that you can customly design and customly code and configure to create whatever you want to create. So you're totally open, you can create a smart shoe. Uh, for example, it's not there in Packet Tracer, but go for it and uh, you can enable your own smart things. Packet Tracer also has uh, so-called MCUs and SBCs, where uh, SBC um, is a single board computer like Raspberry Pi and MCU is microcontroller is like Arduino. So you can also program these guys and play uh, with IoT environment. How, for example, in these examples, you have um, a sensor, um, I think it's a bent uh, sensor, and you have some regulator here and you have some uh, other sensor here, which, uh, which is being controlled by, by this microcontroller, okay? Uh, so I mentioned that you can create uh, your custom devices like a smart shoe or or, um, or this one, uh, or for example, a smart curtain that could be opened and closed just by programming the device yourself. Finally, you can create, uh, if you want, the simulation of a smart home with internet connectivity to the external network and to internet service provider and some internal automation like smart windows smart, uh, uh, I don't know, lawn sprinkler, uh, heaters, uh, different monitoring devices, uh, air conditioning. It can all be managed by your uh, mobile device or computer and you can play with that stuff. So here are some of the IoT highlights. I will not uh, stay long on this slide. Just, uh, just to mention, it's a lot of stuff. Probably it's uh, uh, for uh, <laughs> a week of different workshops. It's a mix of different IoT solutions and also uh, networking solutions. Let me do uh, one demo for you. This will be, um, so excuse me, I'm just, I need I mean, to close. Um, because I know we are, you know, on time. Yeah. I, I mean, it's time, uh, so we maybe open the poll, you know, so if people need to leave and maybe leave it open for 10 minutes or so. Yes, so let's open the poll for those who really need uh, to jump off. Uh, mm -hmm. So so you guys can answer the poll and maybe you can review the recording of the session. We will continue. I think we need like maybe 20 minutes more because we still have a couple of cases to demo. And after that, we will be closing. So sorry for running a little bit late, but we wanted to make a good uh, cocktail session of use cases and that take some time. So yes, Raquel, please uh, start uh, start the poll. No, you, you start the poll. You have the poll coordinator. Oh, I can. I should do it. All right. Uh, just just uh, give me a sec. So uh, let's see. Just to make sure it's set to 10 minutes. All right. The poll now is on. But when you're done with the poll, guys, don't uh, <laughs> don't leave us alone. Um, I mean, I hopefully we, we have a couple of more interesting use cases for you to uh, to, uh, to see. 
So this one will be specifically interesting because it's a custom activity that is not in any of the courses. It was customly built. And uh, okay, I will just share my screen and show that to you. So I will just close the packet tracer and I will I will run this interesting file. I also don't need any more uh, the WebEx application. So IoT simulation allows you to do a lot of things in packet tracer. You can connect smart things to network. You can automate processes and you can uh, you can automate different other dependencies. So uh, you can do a lot of dependencies. So um, once the file is loaded and it seems to be loaded now, we will see the Goldberg machine. So you remember what the Goldberg machine is, is very sophisticated way to execute some very simple task. So the legend is the following. Uh, we have a house here, uh, a house of our friend that has the access point inside and the laptop that wants to connect to this access point. The problem is that if you go to the uh, interface of that uh, of that PC and if you go to wireless and if you search for the network uh, signal that hopefully comes, best Wi-Fi is here, and if you want to connect to that, uh, you actually, and unfortunately, you don't know the password. So how do you guess the password or where do you learn the password? How do you get the password? And for that, um, for that, this Goldberg machine was created and it's functioning in the way that we need to click the button that will enable the LED, that will enable, uh, so it, the LED light will be sensed by a photo sensor, by the detector. And uh, when it's sensed, the motor will be launched and they will, it will create some, uh, some, some movement. So uh, some motion, the motion will be sensed by this motion sensor and it will then uh, trigger the uh, connected device, this, this uh, Bluetooth speaker, it will, it, will, um, it will have some sound. Then the sound will be sensed by a sound sensor and the sound sensor will trigger the garage door to be opened and inside of the garage we have a car. The car will drive to the coverage area of the cell tower to sense the cell tower signal and once the car drives into the cell tower the automation will enable the heating element uh, here and the temperature sensor will start uh, to sense the heat and the temperature should start growing. When the temperature starts growing, which means we have a lot of sun, uh, that means that we have to enable lawn sprinkler to, to uh, well, to, to water the grass a little bit. And uh, that will create uh, maybe a little bit of a flood, uh, which would be measured by the water level monitor that is here. And when the water sensor will sense the some level of the, of the water in, in our uh, backyard, uh, the automation will display you the password here automatically. And that's how we learn the password in a very, very sophisticated way. So let me just uh, quick check the MQTT broker that uh, we have all of the devices connected. I should have three devices. Yep, one, two, three clients are connected. And let me try to launch this activity now and see and see uh, if we can finally get the password. So it is quite sophisticated and honestly, my computer is, is running like with a high CPU load, but let me just interact with the switch and enable the LED. LED. So the LED is on, uh, sensor should be sensing the, sensing the light. Now you see that motor is rotating and the motion sensor is, uh, is seeing the rotation. So you see the car is already moving, so it happens quick. The car is moving into the cell tower coverage area. So which means that we have the speaker enabled. Uh, the sound was, uh, that, that was actually a Bluetooth speaker. So that there is a mobile phone here and Bluetooth speaker and the, and, and the sound sensor. Then garage door and the car is moving into the cellular tower uh, coverage area. After that, you see some traffic is already uh, running here in this network, communicating to, uh, to this microcontroller the next step that the heating element should be enabled. Let's just wait maybe several seconds, maybe a minute more to see if we have temperature growing. I really hope it works. 
But even if not, uh, I think you got the idea. Let's just wait one second. So it is maybe that my computer is a little bit slow uh, to support all of the automation that's integrated here, uh, or just maybe some um, some failure on the way. But well, um, actually, that <laughs> as usually that was working uh, outside of the session. Now it's not really working. Yeah, I think maybe also because the old car, you know, it needs to fill it with maybe fumes or something. It takes time until it reaches the level, but now I see the heating element is on. So we should hope to see temperature increase. Yeah. Yes. Now, so now yeah, I, maybe it took some time. Now we have uh, really, thank you for spotting the, the enablement of the heating element, Raquel. Now the temperature is growing. So let's finally see if we can, if we can get to, to the end of the activity. So I think it should reach like three degrees something uh, to enable the water sprinkler. Yeah, now the water sprinkler is on. And theoretically, we should be having the water level increasing. And as you can see, it is actually increasing. It's instead of zero, 166 already. And it's more than three. So the super with three secret and exclamation is our password. Well, actually, I hope you have no doubts that I can take this password and go to friend's house uh, and connect connect the laptop. I will not be doing that. I will uh, better save several seconds and quit the lab, and continue our uh, continue our showcases uh, with the with the following use case. So, use case number six: uh, network automation and programmability. This is something very very recent that was enabled, and we already touched on that with uh, uh, discussing about network controller. So the idea is that now you have a kind of DNA C network controller uh, that you can enable in your network. It can gather your network parameters. It can uh, provision configuration to your networking devices, <clears throat> and uh, you can do and you can you can do this exercises and play with this controller from inside of the packet tracer, but also from the outside of the packet tracer. Right. So. Uh, that's uh, this is the web interface that you can see inside of the packet tracer, but you also can use your web browser uh, to open the web uh, interface of this controller with your regular browser of your host PC. So it's outside of the packet tracer, and you still want, you still can interact with that. You also can interact with uh, API requests uh, from your local PC, like using Postman, for example, or even using Python scripts. Uh, by the way, there are such labs in DevNet Associate curriculum that uh, enables you to execute uh, Python scripts uh, to, uh, to a simulated packet tracer network controller. So, I mean, it's a whole world of possibilities and exercises you can play with. We have uh, even two resources here on that slide that you can uh, review later. These are other IPD sessions recorded. But my goal was to show you one lab. Uh, it will not be the whole lab. It would be just a couple of ideas based on this lab uh, from the DevNet Associate curriculum. So let me now uh, run the PT again. Just give me one second. I, I need to open the lab and then I share my screen. Okay, I hope you can see my screen now. The lab is now uh, the lab is now loading. So here is the network. Let me fast forward the time uh, to speed up network convergence. So you see now that all the links are green, and the story is the following. That's uh, quite sophisticated topology where you have many different devices and many different routers and uh, switches, including layer two switches. And uh, in that topology, we have this guy, this network controller, uh, which is running. 
I want to make it available over uh, my local device port, 58,000. So, and uh, let's see if I can reach it. 192, 168, 101, 254. So first of all, I want to reach this controller from uh, the in internal browser of this PC simulated one. Uh, 101, 254, I think that should be the address. Yep, uh, username and password. So actually I see the, uh, the invitation page, I can log in. Let me also try to do the following. Let me uh, pull up the browser here and do one, uh, do localhost port 58,000. So you see, I have the login screen. So currently my browser is talking directly uh, with, with Packet Tracer network controller. Once I logged in, I actually can see all of the web interface with all of the features of network controller. I can see how much devices do I have. I can uh, I can navigate and see the hosts that controller has learned. I can even go to API documentation. Uh, this is the API documentation hosted inside of the network controller, inside of the packet tracer in simulated environment. And I'm using my local web browser uh, to, to talk uh, to this guy, okay? So uh, now let's uh, let's try to simulate the following. In this network, we have this server that acts as the uh, also as the DNS server. If I open the controller, for example, and go to policies to network settings, I will see that currently I have the DNS assigned 192, 168, 101, 100. And if I go to any of the routers uh, and check the running configuration, show running configuration. Uh, I will see that my DNS is assigned to this server. So what if I have a new server in my network that I want to make uh, kind of to replace, uh, to replace that original DNS? So let me configure that one and assign the address of, for example, 192, 168, uh, 101, 200. So not 100, but let it be let it be 200, okay? So let me assign it. And I also need to assign the default gateway 192, 168, 101.1. Uh, I think it should be it should be okay now. So uh, now I will connect uh, this server with the cable uh, to the same switch. Let me choose some port. So now the server is connected. And finally, I need to configure the DNS service here. So uh, let it be cisco.com and let the address be the same as this server, 192, 168, uh, just uh, to see that I can reach it. Uh, adding it here, enabling the DNS servers service. So now this DNS server on the newly added server should give me Cisco.com and refer uh, to that old one, okay? But now I need to reconfigure all of the networking devices. Uh, should I do it manually? Probably I could, but I better go here to network controller and uh, and change the DNS here and save the configuration, save successfully. And now I want to push the config, uh, the new config with the new DNS server, I want to push to all of my networking devices. So it is saved successfully, it's saying. Let me return here and just check the configuration of uh, of that same router. Show running config, uh, where was it? So here is the new configuration. So you see that network controller has pushed the configuration uh, of the new DNS server to, um, to all devices, right? And now if I ping cisco.com, theoretically, um, I was hoping it would be speaking with this server. Well, for some reason, it's not speaking with the server. Maybe, uh, maybe I made uh, some small mistake. I don't think I want to really troubleshoot it now. Let me just try from another device. Yeah, from another device it's worked. So it was just a quick packet tracer lag. As you see, packet tracer is not working like a real device. So I got the response from the new server and the DNS reconfiguration was done through this network controller. So I hope it was also a good exercise and a good demo on the uh, network controller and uh, network programmability.
And finally, we have the last case, uh, packet tracer tutor activity. And with that, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, back to you, Raquel. Thank you. So I hope you can pass me now the presenter ball, or it used to be a ball. Um, and yep, yeah, done. so the last case of today, thank you, uh, is tutor activities. So actually, this is something that is inside the new courses in Packet Tracer, the ones we have created for Skills for All, and they are built to make uh, you know the student uh, achieve the final uh, the final activity, like to be able to complete the activity, depending on how much help they need. Like maybe not everyone needs the same help. Maybe some people, you know, are able to complete it without any hints. But maybe some people need some help, you know, to be able to complete it. Especially we are talking about activities, um, you know, that maybe you are not running uh, uh, with them. Maybe that's something they are doing on their own, and that's why they are tutor activities. They have, let's say, this um, this tutor in Packet Tracer where they can get hints or help. Because maybe, you know, as we can see here, maybe to reach the same level, you know, of this apple, maybe some people will need more help than others. And that's why uh, this is done to support everyone in their student, you know, journey and make a personalized experience to them. And for that, we have different also kinds of hints. So we have, for example, text based hints. So where you will get uh, like this, uh, you know, question mark here and you click it and then you will get things like this. Like notice that the wearing closet has a rack, a pegboard and a table. You need to change the zoom level. So it's trying to, you know, help you a bit. It's not giving you the solution straight away, but just maybe give the, giving you a hint so you can reach to the same level and complete each part. For example, this part is already completed. You have already a mark that is completed, and now you are on this one. You are getting some help to be able to co complete it. And then we also have the video hints. So this will be a video that it will actually show you, okay, for example, take this device and move it here, and then you uh, connect it, take this cable and connect it here and here. You know, it will show you in a video what you have to do. Obviously, this is like a, maybe a higher level hint that if you really are completely lost, you know, maybe you will get this uh, video hint. And with this, I think it is better to show you on a demo because uh, there are more things to explore and to see in these uh, tutor activities. By the way, this tutor activity is uh, in the exploring, uh, in this starting, how was the name? Exploring networking with Cisco Packet Tracer, I think is the name of the course. Um, and this is a troubleshooting activity. So in every activity, we see here at the bottom uh, that you have, a, you know, a toggle function to say how many hints you want. You say you want all hints. I want more hints, critical hints, or no hints at all. Okay. So actually, the student can decide. It's like, no, I don't want hints. I just want to go through the challenge alone. Maybe I just want the critical ones in case I really get, you know, stuck or, you know, maybe more, or look, I want all hints, you know, I want to go easy on this. So you will get the information here of what you have to do. So in this case, it's just telling us, okay, this is a troubleshooting activity and we need to find out if all, you know, the devices are able to reach the internet and if everything is working. And it's telling us that maybe a good way to check this is to see if they can reach a website. So uh, at the moment, as you can see, the next button, is you know gray out so i cannot click it because this is expecting me to do something it's telling me hey this is a good way you know you can do start doing something so if i wait for a bit now you see that ah now i got a hint it's like saying okay you are taking you know some time you ask for all hints so i'm going to give you a hint so i will click here and say you can use ping or tracer or the web browser to try to reach this website it's like, oh, okay, okay, now I know what I have to do. Let's copy this and um, maybe uh, let's try. Okay, so what about PC4? Maybe let's come and let's do ping and paste this and yeah, okay. You see the ping was uh, successful and I actually got a message here that it says PC4 connectivity seems fine. Okay, well done. Uh, so we should do the same with all the other ones. Uh, let's go, for example, to laptop one. Now I'm going to try just going into the web browser. Mm, it says hostname and resolve. Looks like laptop one can get to the internet. So we found out that there is a problem 
and you know we are getting immediate feedback about it and now you see actually my next button is uh, enable because we discovered the problem and now it's telling us okay now you need to connect the laptop to the wireless network and it's like okay how can i do that uh so maybe i try and i come here and say okay so i will go to the pc wireless i'll see okay do we have any network available oh yes there is one network called academy let's try to connect mm, okay but i don't have the key so how can i connect so the same if i just wait you know for a for a bit i will get a hint and it says okay maybe you don't know how to so let me show you and it says you will need to log in into the wireless router from one of the connected pcs to find the settings to access the wireless lan ah okay uh you know but Again, if I don't do anything now and I wait uh, again for a little bit, uh, it will give me another hint because I can say, okay, I can, I need to access the, the, the router. And maybe I come here, click the router and it's like, okay, it's locked. How do I access the router? Okay. Here we are thinking as well of students, maybe who are starting with this, right? Now I wait a bit, I get another one. And look, now I get a video hint. And it's telling me use the ipconfig command on a connected PC to discover the IP address of the wireless router. Okay, uh, the, that will be the default gateway. And now it's telling me on the video, step by step, what I should do. Okay, perfect. So now I just need to come here, go to the command prompt, do ipconfig, and okay, my default gateway is this one. Great. So now I should be able to access it. I get another hint and it says, now use the default gateway's IP address in the web browser to access the wireless router. So as you see, because I have all the old, the old hints, you know, the more, um, you know, the more I wait, the more hints I will get. Obviously, if you reduce the number of hints, you don't, won't get so many, but obviously for the demo purpose, I wanted to show you as many as I could. Okay, so now it says, yeah, I'm trying to log in. What is the password? So it's telling me here. Okay, try admin, admin, very secure. And now, okay, let's just go to wireless security. Uh huh. And here I have the passphrase Cisco one two three. So now with that, you know, uh, maybe I'm able to complete uh, the the activity again. Maybe if I, you know, keep waiting, but I don't want to keep waiting a lot uh, because we're already running a lot of uh, time extra. So, but then I can just now able to connect. And now it's saying, great, now you connected, right? And that part is completed. I just want to complete one last thing. So to show you another thing of these activities. Uh, I will see the Cisco PA. Okay, and now I can reach the website. So you successfully completed. Now, another thing that are on the PTTAs or the tutor activities is that are also questions to reflect. Okay, like, you know, things like, what did you do? So there are also like text based questions and after you complete them, you will get, you know, some uh, feedback on them. Okay. Now here I'm just completing whatever. And if I submit, uh, you know, okay. And this one, for example, is just reflecting, but there are another ones who will tell you, okay, the right answers will be this, will be that. So the you uh, the student can also get the right answers. And with that you submit and now you see completion is at hundred percent. So. You know, I hope now that you get a little bit a better idea of how a tutor activity is. And, you know, I think with this, we are moving to the end of the session, finally, 25 minutes after. <laughs> but I hope, I think, you know, most of the people, you know, are still here. So I think that's a great, a great sign. So thank you very much for staying longer. <laughs> Samuel, back to you. Uh, thank you, Raquel. So, guys, uh, some colleagues have already started to uh, to answer this question. We wanted to challenge you with another one to take your uh, annotation errors and tell us what is your idea uh, about this session? Well, maybe not just about this session, but generally about Packet Tracer. Uh, just interesting. Uh, what what do you think? Uh, how might you improve? Well, we promised you to show 1,000 ways to use Packet Tracer, and I realized that we showed only seven. Um, well, and still it took us <laughs> like extra 25 minutes of this session. Sorry for that. Uh, but I think all of the use cases were um, very different uh, from many different areas, and hopefully you have now uh, some good understanding. 
of how you could reuse uh, those and how you could better entertain your students, better teach your students, be a better educator in front of them uh, in their eyes, and um, uh, how you can maybe improve, modify, and make it more fun of the uh, of the learning uh, and teaching process at, at your school or whatever you are doing with Packet Tracer. So, uh, dear all, I really appreciate your uh, kind feedback. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that was, uh, Raquel, can you take one screenshot? That's just sure. interesting. <laughs> thank you. So, um, that's, uh, that's a great pleasure for us to see that uh, you enjoyed this session and that uh, you also have many new ideas how you can um, do better with Packet Tracer. So, uh, with that, uh, let me probably pause the recording because uh, we have all the material covered and go 